We are plenty planners. We're the planniest planners you've ever known. I'm gonna work until I go home and then I'm gonna work more and then I'm gonna go to bed and I'm gonna get up and do it again tomorrow. Even when space opens up to rest, we get so excited that then we fill it in. We're gonna meet up with you guys and then y'all are coming over for games and we're gonna Skype with our family right after church and we're gonna, and then we get to the end of the day and we're absolutely wrecked. I don't feel like I'm resting. I'm always on to the next thing in my mind and I carry a lot of stress. Why can't I rest? I'm just driven. Um, it's, it's my personality and it's also in my choices. Um, it's go, go, go. And so this idea of the Sabbath just butts up against that. For us, Sabbath uh, practice really started because of a course we took at Regent College, a summer school class with Marva Dawn. Sabbath growing up was always construed in terms of a requirement that no longer applied. Being reintroduced to the concept in a way that moved it from a requirement to the way that God has actually just designed the world and designed us to have a need for rest. And not just a need, but Sabbath being a gift. We're just brand new concepts. The class itself was based around Marva Dawn's book, Keeping the Sabbath Holy. And she says there's four ways to enter into the Sabbath. There's ceasing, there's resting, there's embracing, and there's feasting. We actually use the phrase, time is money, which is an interesting idea and maybe, maybe not completely true. Um, and so, but in that mindset, it's how do you use your time as efficiently as possible and produce the most? And Sabbath just rejects that as a paradigm for how you would spend your day. And even that phrase, spend your day, is like surprisingly monetary, you know? So ceasing from your paid employment and ceasing from your uh, work as a student have been two baselines for us when it comes to ceasing from work. Something that's been painful to realize through Sabbath is how much the rest of my life is full of work and distraction um, and how that busyness and how that constant noise um, is one way of just kind of floating along on the surface of life. Just by stopping that for a day, or trying to stop that for a day, um, and realizing how hard it is, is a call to not live life that way. I think we say no to some things so that we can say yes to better things. I almost always have a Sabbath nap uh, after church. It's not actually that restful to spend a whole afternoon just browsing the web. And we're not really hard and fast about that. I mean, we'll Skype with our family or we'll watch a movie occasionally, but trying to rest in ways that are a little bit more restorative and a little bit less the things we default to. I really feel like the, the Sabbath saved my life um, when it comes to my own physical brokenness. So I have a chronic pain condition um, for about a decade now and not um, knowing how to enter into rest um, fed into that problem. Sabbath is not just about your well-being. It's for something, and largely that for is the other. We're quite far away from both of our families. If we want to share our lives with them, we need to set aside time to have those Skype conversations or talk to them on the phone. And so Sabbath has been a time we could embrace people and relationships that otherwise would be really difficult to maintain. And then Similarly, it's this space where you can enjoy longer, slower, bigger you know, chunks of time with, with friends. We're really good at feasting. So good. 
No, feasting is the best. <laughs> feasting is the part of Sabbath that I think makes us long for it the most. There's an actual tasting of what is to come, of shalom, of the perfected kingdom of God. Gratitude is necessarily part of feasting. The sense that something's given that's undeserved, that um, it comes to us as grace, is cause for joy and hospitality, right? When something's given, it's also available for others. And you won't let me down if you took time off. The wind could cause you your job. We've glorified the busy life to feel our time. question for Marva was, okay, what if I get to the end of the week and it's time for the Sabbath and I'm not ready for it? I haven't done enough to be prepared. Um, there's no way that I've set everything aside so I can take a break. I haven't worked hard enough that I have earned a day off. Um, what do I do those weeks? And that was my deep, honest question. And <laughs> she just looked at me and said, that has nothing to do with it. That has nothing to do with the Sabbath. It's not did you work hard enough to earn a day off and now you can crash. Um, it has nothing to do with you and whether you've earned anything. It's all a gift from God um, and it breaks into your regular routine whether you're ready for it or not and that's what's beautiful about it. And I just sat in her office and just wept. Right? Because that's not, that's not the kind of Sabbath I was open to. I was looking for another thing I could earn, another thing I could be good enough for, another way that I could be proud of what I'm doing. Um, and she just pulled the rug out from under me. Um, that's, not, that's not what Sabbath is. Um, I needed that. I needed that so bad. If the bees should stop and the voices drop, 